Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks, to The Hungry Gamer is back with another episode of Boards and Brews, and today I am joined again by my occasional regular co-host, Original Don, and today we're, we're going to talk about a double con experience that we had, maybe even triple con, depending on how you count it, of Train Con 1, Rage Con, and Train Con 2, all in one action-packed episode. And before we get started, the always question that we have what is your brewed beverage of choice today don i am so i don't have any of our non-sponsor beer uh but i do have the firestone walker 805 california blonde ale it's a nice substitute and uh, i just have some iced tea and my amazing uk pub mug courtesy of mark dainty that is amazing yeah no, I, when we were going around the pub, I didn't see this mug used a single time. Like, apparently, it's like what they did back So it's not day. authentic? I mean, I guess it is authentic from, like, when he was a child, I guess. Like they did he it says. then. You know, when he was, like, an eight-year-old in the pub, which I assume is how they do it there. Of course. But did you want to start late? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so to jump in, well, what have you been playing lately? have i been playing lately so just this week uh things in rings arrived from all play uh we have played that seven times already here at the house in the last you couple put of days that on your 10 by 10 you i should have be done in a week uh so this is a new game new small box game from from all play uh it has three strings that make rings and you're making a venn diagram uh one person is the knower and they have three categories one for each of the rings and they seed three cards where they go in the diagram, and then each player has a hand of five cards, and you're trying to put your cards in the right segment of the Venn diagram or completely outside of it. And uh, the first person to run out of cards wins. If, like, if you get it wrong, the person who is the knower moves it to where it should be, and you have to draw a new card. Otherwise, if you get it right, you get to keep going. So it's a really simple game mechanically. Uh Figuring out where things go is the big challenge, and it has easy, medium, and difficult cards, and man, do they get difficult. It's really hard to figure out what the rules are, and kind of the interesting thing about it is one ring is about the word itself. It could be about the arrangement of the letters or the number of syllables, things like that. One is about the context of the object, like every card has a thing on it, and so it's how that object is used in society. Um, and then the other one is a, a uh, an attribute of the object, so some physical attribute or something like that. So, and so you, you, could you have, have no idea what it is that you're what the categories are. You have no idea what they are. You're trying to guess where your cards go based gotcha. on so where you, other you, cards you're, you're have gone. Throwing crap in rings and hoping you something sticks. Yep. I'm going to be so bad at this. And they are they are very adamant that like it is not about figuring out the rules that is not the goal of the game the goal is to figure out how to put your cards in the right place so that you run out first and that is very much how people have won 85 percent of the time so far it's just kind of sort of suss it out without actually knowing what the rules are mm. no nope. can't uh, wait to lose this one of the advanced rules that i had for the word was the first two letters are in alphabetical order so somehow you're supposed to see that pattern in the cards that are in or out of that circle. And it is not obvious. Oh, gosh. I hate this one. And then one of the uh, um, context clues was can be carried by passengers on an airplane. And I was critiqued for saying that a goblin did not fit that category. But I felt very clever when I said a heart did fit that category. I mean, that's true. And I would agree with you. Yeah. You, you, you can't carry on a goblin. Like you can no, buy, it needs you its own seat. seat. Yeah, that's what I said, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you're right." That's unbelievable. But it was questioned, and that's half the fun of the game. Is like, why didn't this fit in there? Gotcha. Uh, so that's just like at the, at the end of it, you're like, you do your kind of uh, recap. Yes. I yeah. See. So it's a quick-ish game. We had one that went on forever, um, and then it's just you know nobody really cares who wins. Occasionally, you're like, could somebody please win? There's a million cards out there and none of us know what's going on. But most of the time, it's fun. You start to try to figure it out. Sometimes you figure it out and then a card goes in there that completely breaks the rule that you thought it was. 
and it's a fun kind of frustrating. Well, I'm looking forward to losing. Designed by Peter C. Hayward, by the way. I sure remember to say that for once. Oh, yeah, we're going to... We might play one of his games this this weekend. Uh, so nice. the, the, the first one uh, for me is one that I've been playing off and on for a while, and I keep forgetting to talk about. And I was given a code for the New Dominion app. And hmm. I, I don't love Dominion. It's fine. It's a fine game, and I understand its importance to the hobby. But I got to say, this app is really good. I mean, it it's kind of addictive. Like, I, I played more Dominion with this app than I have in my entire life. And a buddy of mine has a lot of Dominion. He loves the game. But, yeah, it's it's a really good app. So I'm pretty... I, I don't know how much it costs for people. I imagine just the core is pretty cheap. But then I do know that there's, like, 17 million expansions for Dominion. So you know, even if, like, each one's right. two bucks... That's like a thousand dollars, right? Um, but yeah, I you know I gotta say like if you like Dominion, then you should have the app. Like, I don't know, it's a great app. It the the animation's really good. The it does all the nonsense for you. So what more could you want? It's not very exciting. I haven't been playing a ton of stuff most recently since we since we got back from the cons. But so a fair amount of that. I've been playing a lot of Dominion. All right, what's next for you? I. Play. I've been enjoying Federation. I don't know if I've talked about this on here before. It seemed like we played it at the last con, maybe. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, we, we played it, and you're talking about it because I really wanted to play it at RageCon, and somebody forgot right. to bring it. Somebody forgot to bring it. I don't it's know probably who that Peter was. Yeah. Probably. I'm blaming Peter. Um, definitely going to bring it this weekend. We're meeting up again. Um, so if I've already talked about this, forgive me, but it is uh, it is space politics. You are placing um, what are they called? Delegates. That's not the right word, but delegates poker in poker chips representing delegates in the Galactic Senate. There are two sides to it, and you're voting on what planet is going to score. And then each space you put them in is going to dictate what planet you're going to go take an action on or what Senate office. Yeah, it's a little bit of engine building. It's a point salad. It's kind of hard to describe without visuals, but it is shockingly fun. Um, the first time I played it, which was at Dice Tower West back in March, we learned it from the rule book, and it was a bit of a rough first game, but it, it really is a pretty good rule book. There's just a lot going on, and so for four people to sit around and suss out the game from scratch was challenging, but I have taught it and played it four times since then, and I can't get enough of it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, It uh, is a play- French game, and I forget the publisher's name, but just Federation. Yeah, we played it... Um... Well, we played it once in person, and then we played it once mm-hmm. on BGA, and it was about... It was interesting, because I knew how to play but then we started playing, I was like, I don't remember how to play this. I was like, oh, well, I'll figure it out, just mucking about. And it was it was competitive. I like to imagine that you mm-hmm. didn't know how to play for the first half either, and and it just came out, like, for, for a brief shiny moment, I was like, oh, I did it. And then here comes Don, storming back, beats me by, like, 20. It was very depressing. But, yeah, so I... I you know, it's this is the game that's for the person who, like, looks at the prequel trilogies of Star Wars. And it's like, you know what looks the most interesting? Padme in the Senate. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. Yeah, that, that's that, that's what that's what this game is. It, yeah, it's it's kind of area control, too. You didn't mention that. Like, not really, but kind of? Because you get points for controlling the rows with your delegates. Yeah, you get... Yeah, you get points for controlling the rows. It's worker placement because only one person can go to each box in the Senate. And it's, uh, I don't know what you call it, but you get rewarded for advancing the furthest on certain planets at the end of the game, too. I don't know what yeah, that Yeah, it almost seems called, like but... they, were, they were playing that Three Rings game and it was like Euro games. And they said, what's in the middle of this? Let's make a game out of that. <laughs> yeah, so I've been really enjoying it. It's a colorful game, too. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to play it. It's going to, it's going to be devastating when you forget it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next one for me, and th- this is what I spent most of the past few weeks playing that I did play, and that is Madara, the huge dungeon crawl anime, Japanese anime as a dungeon crawl game, which is fantastic. I don't remember where I ranked it in my top 10 dungeon crawls, but it's been in my top 10 dungeon crawls two times running. And I just had my head that this summer... I was going to finish Act 1. This Act 1 has a storybook that is something like 500 pages of story. And you you don't read all of it, but you you read a lot of it. 
And I was like, I'm going to finish this. And so I opened it back up. And you want to know what page I was on when I started again? Well, uh, no, 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 of course. 249. <laughs> ah, so you're yeah, halfway. Yeah, so like... Good job. Not, not, not even, so I spent two weeks. I played a ton. I had to put it aside for a little bit. So now the goal is maybe I can finish it by Christmas. Because sometime in December, January is when Act 2 and 3 are supposed to come. And that's the thing here. It's probably another 500-page book for Act 2, another 500-page sure. book for Act 3. So I, I think I'm never I think that I'm gonna be never finished with this. But it is a lot of fun. I have been really enjoying it. And that they did they did send all they updated all of the cards in the game and they sent that to me. And it's had some balancing. Most of it, it seems like they just numbered all the cards. So, like, you could check mm. that you had everything. Like, you know. Yeah. So they just kind of went back and did that. And they gave a few things in there as well. They gave a couple of cards that could let you play with fewer characters. Because the problem I was having is, like, my characters have so many abilities now. And you have to have four of them out there. And so, like, I had this, like, huge table full of, like, cards. And I was like managing it like i was that meme from always sunny in philadelphia where charlie's got like the strings going everywhere but now you can just play with just two which makes it way more manageable and i quit before i finally put it away because i was playing and i had my four characters and that's like oh and now you split the party and now you're gonna play two parties going at once and i was like i can't i, I can't no and i just put it away lot. yeah and shoved it but now but it's so it's super manageable now so lots of fun love that game it's insane. I'd say I'd give it to you when I'm done, but as we establish, I'm never going to be done. So there you go. It's the thought that counts. Exactly. Exactly. So so what is, what is the next thing on your table? What are you going to get to next? And I can't believe this is your next. I'm shocked by this. Oh, this is Sorry, this is not my next. I was still putting down things I've been playing, but I just played Architects of the West Kingdom for the first time in a long time and the first time with the expansion, which... It adds little touches that enhance the game, and I enjoyed it. So I won't say a whole lot about that. A lot of people know the game. It's a you know few years old work replacement game. It's great, Shin Phillips. Um, I love it. It doesn't come out often enough. Um, as far as what's next, it's what we're playing this weekend. I'm bringing things in rings and Federation. I've already talked about those. All right, yeah, so the, the next thing for me outside of whatever we do this weekend is the Dungeon Twister Anniversary Edition. This is a 20-year-old game. Hmm. And I'd heard about it. I was like, Dungeon Twister. I was like, I don't... That sounds stupid. But apparently sounds Twister... uncomfortable. Right? Apparently Twister refers to the tiles twist. And like um, the, the premise behind the game is you have been imprisoned in this dungeon by an all-powerful wizard who's like, <laughs> dance for me! And you're basically trying to get as much of your team out of the dungeon all the way across the other the other side while not being killed by the other players, minions and stuff. And you have things like 10 different characters you have in there. Like you have the thief that can unlock doors and step on traps. And you have the, the troll, which regenerates and, you know, all these kinds of things. Yeah, it, it looks really neat now that I know it's not Twister. So uh, I'm super excited about, you know, playing that at, at some point. I got, I got to get to it. There is, there is a really good tutorial that they put on BGA. The game is also on BGA, but they actually put a straight up click on the thing and do a tutorial and it teaches you how to play. So I'm pretty I'm pretty excited to to try that digitally and in meat space. Nice. But I will not be bringing it this weekend because I'm flying Spirit Airlines and I can't bring anything. You'd have to buy a seat to bring a board game. Yeah. You know, it's funny. So the cost to check a bag or bring a carry-on one way is more than my round-trip flight on Spirit. So you should just get another seat. It, that's true. Yeah, I could. No, I'm sure they'd find some way to charge me more for that. All right. So before we jump into our Rage Con, Train Con roundup, let me just say, everybody, go check out Noble Knight Games, a lovely sponsor of Hungry Gamer. 
Here at Noble Knight Games, we've been carefully growing the world's largest selection of board games, role-playing games and dice, war games, miniatures and paints, card games, and more. Going on 25 years now. Our rustic castle contains more game and hobby goodness than you can shake a stick at. Complete with careful packaging and the finest customer service the land can provide. You can buy, sell, trade from anywhere in the world. Just like nature intended. Noble Knight Games. And become a member if you want. It's great, right, Don? It's absolutely fun. It's great. Yeah, it's it's really the best thing you've done done with your life, I think. Yeah, no contest. Yeah, I mean, you know, a distant two is, you know, getting married and a distant third Children. is having kids or maybe reverse those. I don't know. It depends on the day. <laughs> oh, spoken like a parent. Oh, my gosh. All right. So we're going to go through and, and we're going to try to do this like we did the last con recap, where instead of kind of recapping everything and I actually have a video that's already out recapping all the games that I played, I've broken it down into some categories here. Obviously, our overall con impressions. I did a whole video about it. So basically, this is uh, overall impressions of the con from Don. And then the categories we have are best moment, biggest surprise, best loss, best win, and then our game of the con is what we have here. So, Don, what were your overall con impressions of Rage Con? We'll talk a little bit about, about the silliness that was Train Con in this moment. Yeah, it, Rage Con was interesting. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's not a huge crowd, and it's definitely 100% about going there to play games. Uh, there, There is a vendor hall, and I cruised through there once or twice. Um, but the focus of this is playing games, and there are little sections. You know, there's a proto spiel, there are scheduled games, there's open gaming, there's a gigantic kids area for, you know, the number of kids that were actually in it. Um, the the first impression walking in the door is this is just a big undecorated conference hall, and I don't know what to expect. It's it's a very bare bones kind of visual, but you know once you get going, you find people. It's all about hanging out with people, meeting new people, playing games, and that's what we did. And so it it was a very nice space for that. And you know I did not miss all the twists and turns of some of the hotels at the the cons we go to here in the Bay area where you have to find the right conference room for the game that you're playing or something like that. You know, everything was just right there in one big room. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I commented in my con recap video that the biggest kind of downside was that vendor hall because all the mm -hmm. aisles just stopped and you couldn't like yeah. uh, wander around and it, it was a very awkward. Thing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. actually the, uh, uh, organizers actually got back to me and they said they got that feedback from almost every vendor after like day one and they're like that will not happen so. again so yeah yeah it it, it 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 was it was super awkward because it's hard enough when you're like like i i know i don't want what you're selling down here like mm -hmm. i just don't i'm not your target but you know they got to give it the old college try anyway and, you know, so you just kind of avoid eye contact or you look, make eye contact and you're like, nah, and you get to see their disappointment and then you got to turn around and go back. <laughs> oh, and I've been on the other it side of that. Like I've worked a sure. bit before and it's. Yeah. Cool. I've sold games at flea market. That attempt to make eye contact is just, it's difficult. It's soul crushing. So yeah, to do it twice for every booth is <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Now, so the other thing that we did was we did train con. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Peter Vaughn, you and myself, we took a train from Martinez, California to Reno, which is like a six hour train, something like that. And we gamed most of the way out. So what mm -hmm. do you think? Would you do it again? I would absolutely do it again. There was a moment where I thought the whole thing was going to be a bust right at the beginning, but it was a lot of fun you know we just took over a table in the snack car the train was never so crowded that it felt like we were taking up space that somebody else needed to eat a meal or anything like that um it was a lot of fun you know you have to pick and choose your games make sure they're they're going to be um you know the minimal table. table space kind of things yeah um you can't bring a table hog obviously it'd be great to play you know dwellings of eldervale on a train but i don't know that we'd make that work we could maybe make that work. Um, but 
yeah, it was a lot of fun. We it was great. It's a beautiful, you know, ride on the train mm -hmm. from Martinez to Reno. You go over the mountains, you see lots of trees. You know, they would occasionally come on and say, Hey, such and such is coming up on the left. And, you know, I'm spoiled. I grew up in California. I was just like, Yeah, I've seen trees and lakes before. It's great. Let's play a game. Uh, but it's still gorgeous. It's nice to be in that scenery and it was a great backdrop. Yeah, and I gotta say, like, I think people are sleeping on train. I mean, literally, people are sleeping on trains. But I think they were, are sleeping on taking train trips because we were in, in coach, mm -hmm. and I've flown in first class a couple of times in my life, not recently. And those seats are huge, and you can they really were yeah you wander around. They're really comfy. I, you know, that it's real. It I I would absolutely do it again. I would consider going a little further. You know, I, I don't know that I'd want to do a multi-day thing because then you got to get like a sleeper car or something. Or I guess you don't. Those things are pretty comfy. And you just they sleep. were. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, maybe, but you know, then you start. Then you're going to start to stink. You know, maybe people will start to stink. But yeah, it was yeah. it was great going out, coming back, just grand old time. All right, so let's jump into our best of the con. What would you call? Wow, that's your best of the con. Your best. Wow. Okay. We're going with I'm best moment. <laughs> best moment of the con. I, I'm going to go first because I'm, I'm going to let, let you uh, bring this one home. So for me, it was uh, my brother Skippy was there. And also a friend of the of the show, Corey Thompson, I think formerly a Dice Tower now. I don't think he does that anymore, but now he does above board TV. He was there and recently he filed for the trademark for the word Meeple in America as a response to Hans und Gluck for sending a cease and desist to someone in Europe because they own the trademark in Europe. And he publicly put out there in the article that I read, said, yeah, anybody can use it for credit and candy, which I think was tongue in cheek anyway. But people are taking it seriously. And so Skippy decided he was going to write a contract. So he wrote a contract on a napkin. It was a nice napkin, though, and sure. got cookies. And it said something along the lines of Skippy is allowed to say the word meeple for all time if you accept these cookies or something like that. And Corey playing along called his lawyer, actually called his lawyer That's about hard. this. Like, yeah. He got charged an hour for that. Mm -hmm. And so called his lawyer and his lawyer said, look, you got to put an asterisk on there, which uh, in this show we appreciate. Mm -hmm. And it changed it to say pending trademark because he's like well if i lose the trademark or something then i have no power over that or, or whatever but then the lawyer said but by the way we have no power over someone saying the word meeple anyway so take the damn cookies you're giving away Corey's secrets yeah well hey the, well you know our, our our viewership is so high I, i'm sure that's gonna <laughs> be out there but yeah and so he my brother he took it he's framing the, the contract he's putting it on the wall of his his game room i just Loved everything about that, mostly because Corey called his lawyer about it. All right. So he, he brought that to show it to me and he the buildup was immense for it. He's just like, oh, you've got to see what I got from a game room and just like was so excited. He was trying to find it and just like it took him five minutes to dig it out. And the whole time he's telling me how great it is. You got to see that, and I'm like, he. I thought he bought some decoration at the vendor hall or something that was just amazing, and I couldn't wait to see it. But then he pulls out this napkin. I'm like, what the heck? yeah, it was just so weird, but yeah. fantastic. I just, I loved everything about it. Speaking of uh, things that I didn't love, what was your best moment of the con, Don? <laughs> so I was struggling with this one, and so I went with one that was not the best positive moment. But it was a moment. Um, one of the very last things we did was play Dungeons, Dice, and Danger, which we were trying to get in on um, when they were demoing it at, at Gen Con two years ago and could never find an empty seat. And we saw it in the library and we were looking for something to play. And I was like, hey, let's do this. And you went off to do something and I read the rules and we sat down to play it. And it sounded like it was going to be fun. The game would not end. Nope. And I... The, the whole thing is you're rolling dice and you pick a combination and you pick a number, two numbers and you cross them off or one number, you cross it off on your map and you're trying to get to the different treasures. And it seemed like it was going to be neat, would not end. Yeah, it was neat for the first I, third of it. Yeah. 
and just like we just kept going and going and going until our characters died because we couldn't draw any cover any more numbers and like nobody got to the win condition I mean we skipped straight to the medium difficulty map but you know but we're pro like gamers just, that should have been okay it was still just rolling dice at the like but I mean so yeah. you said and for a while I was like maybe you're right like we must be doing something wrong but you read uh -huh. the rules. We watched yeah. the Rodney Smith video. We both watched, yeah. oh, like, I, I walked off to check on a, a drawing when he was explaining the the special room tiles or whatever. And yeah. look, like or dislike Rodney, he does good rules videos. He does. Like, I would say the best. And apparently, you told me even in this one, he was like, look, if you got the first edition, your rules are wrong. Listen to me, which I, I also yeah. love that. Which I but totally yeah. believe because that rule book was a mess. It didn't make it, any sense. Yeah, it just it just wouldn't end by the end. It just felt like, well, I hope I roll a seven. No, oh, I didn't. Oh, well, I guess I got hurt. <laughs> like, it, yeah. it was like the worst game of craps ever by the end. So I put this down as my best moment because it was just, I don't know. It was soul crushing, especially for you. Just You were just like, I did not enjoy that. It just... I don't like to speak ill of games, but it was just an experience. I like I almost I almost want to play it again just to see if it's a different experience. But well, you enjoy that. I'm not gonna hunt it down. Yeah, I, it was weird. I, I it was and I said in my con recaps so a spoiler everybody, it was last in my con recap. And it this is the only second time that I've put a game in a con recap that I usually it's like how the levels of fun that I had. But they're all were fun. It was not fun. It's up there with Western Legends as the only two I've played. You're wrong about that game. Gosh, that just was so unfun. Like, I, I, if you want, I'll play that. I'll play Western Legends again if you want. But man, that was unfun. And this was way unfunner than Western Legends. I just, I'm so upset about it because I thought it was going to be good. So, no, yeah, I put that on there to trigger you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I, I I don't know who the publisher is, and if you are listening, I'm sure you make a lot of fantastic games. And this one. Uh, so moving into the next thing, biggest surprise, which you, I, well I could oh I could almost say uh, Dungeons Dice and Danger again because I I really thought I was like it, but biggest surprise for me was one that I specifically ordered from Noble Knight Games. I specifically ordered to play on the train. I'd heard it was good, but I was like, this is something that we can fit on the train, on a table. It shouldn't be too long. I like co-op games quite a bit, and this is a crisis management game. You're trying to build up your space colony to where it is self-sufficient. And mm -hmm. very simple. You're playing, you, you have these cards in your hand that you're either going to use as the modules they are, which will adjust your life support, your oxygen, your energy... There's one more I'm not thinking of. Food. Yeah, food. Yeah. It'll uh, adjust those things uh, because, you know, you have a, a greenhouse now, so you have to spend more water and energy, but you get more food, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're spending those cards to build them or you're actually putting them down you know, to build and you're kind of moving around. I really liked it. And we, we played not the easy. We played the first step up and I, I thought it was really clever for its speed, its simplicity, but it was challenging. For a hot minute, I was a little bit worried. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of different character types you can play. And it actually did something really cool as we played where I drew some event and it's like, oh, you've been recalled to, to Earth. Now you're somebody new. And it just, even when I was starting to get kind of bored with my character, oh, here's a new one. So I, I was really pleasantly surprised by that game. Like I figured I'd like it. But I really enjoyed it. So that that that's my biggest surprise. What do you think of that game? Yeah, I'd like to play that one again. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a very satisfying win. Like to to win, you get to the point where all of your things are producing every round. Um, if you're consuming them, you're trying to get to the point where you're, like you're trying to avoid running out of everything, right? Or running yeah, out of enough stuff that all your backup goes away. But like once every one of the different resources producing at the end of the round, you've won because you're self-sufficient it's great like it was a satisfying conclusion it kind of snuck up us on us a little bit like all of a sudden we won and like not in a dumb way it was just it was very satisfying i enjoyed it yeah yeah so that, that was my, my biggest prize now 
the uh, my second biggest surprise is going to be what you put as your biggest surprise because there is nothing on our outline here. Yeah, I, I very much was filling out the outline at the last very last second, um, which is why the Dungeons, Dice, and Danger was a surprise for Will. But um, this is from TrainCon specifically, and it was the grumpy conductor at the beginning of TrainCon 1. And this was this is another one. This is not a positive surprise, but it was a big surprise. Um, and the, the only time this is, but I will say, I'll preface Don's story by saying, the most concerned I've ever actually seen Don was in the immediate aftermath of this. All right, so go ahead. I was very worried. So we we get on the train and they're like, oh, you're going to Reno. You are going to get on this specific car, which I've never seen before. Like it's usually uh, get on the train, the doors are open. And then we get on there and there's this old conductor guy and he's just like, two people to seats. Like you cannot sit by yourself, find a buddy. And you know, this nice little old lady's like, can I just wait until somebody sits by me? And he's like, no, find a friend. And he's like, this train is going to be completely packed. You have to sit by somebody. I'm not checking tickets until that happens. And like over and over and over again. Just and to be clear, at lectures this time, in the first was, 10 minutes. It was 10, 10% occupancy, maybe yes. at that time. Yes. And so this guy was just downright angry about it. And I was like, he's not going to let us get out of our seats. This whole crane con idea is a bus. We're never going to play anything. Cause like the first seats we found were like, so my wife came with us. And so it's me and my wife here and you and Peter over here. So we were going to be able to like pass cards to each other. So I was very worried. And like, once the train got going, we're like, okay, let's go to the snack car. And like, as we're going to the snack car, he's on the loudspeaker. It's four people to a table, not two, not three. Be ready for somebody to sit with you. Everybody gets to sit in the observation car and look at the nice scenery. And just like it was just so concerning. And then we get there and there's nobody there. And we get downstairs and, you know, there, all the tra- tables are available. And, you know, at that point, we parked at a table and we played games the whole way. But just that first half hour i was very worried that train con was a bust so that was the biggest surprise yeah that that was good in the and just to not that there's any chance she will ever see this but a big shout out to the woman who was running the little canteen down there who mm-hmm. was one hilarious and had clearly has had her fill of this guy's nonsense because at one point she walked over and said something to her she's like I sent the bully away, which just, oh, <laughs> like I just had this image of it. it was like, no, 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 you can't come down into my canteen. Uh-uh, you go be, you go be a tyrant up there, buddy. So, yeah, that's, oh, man, that, that's so, right up there with the uh, woman who tried to buy my game at uh, yes. Kublicon. Yes. All right. So th- this has become my my favorite category that w- we've done now a couple of times. That, that is, what is your best loss? The game that you lost with like, oh. That was so great. So I signed up last minute for a Dwellings of Eldervale tournament. You know, Dwellings is my number one game. Um, Found out that, you know, after we got there that there was a tournament. You know, it was a small tournament, a couple of tables each round for two rounds. And I thought, you know, this will be fun. I have no official affiliation with the game or breaking games or anything. So it's not like I'm jumping in as a ringer and I'm not necessarily going to be good at in the game anyway. And I get there, and Luke Laurie is running the tournament with his son, and um, he's like, hey, two people just dropped out. Like, they went online and, you know, backed out of the game. He's like, so they were trying to figure out what to do with it, and Peter Vaughn came to play in the tournament just for fun. You know, he published the game, so he wasn't going to try to win the tournament or anything, but they were like, you know what, we want to test some of the expansion content. Why don't we just turn this game into a play test? And so... That was the experience of Dwellings of Eldervale. Instead of playing in the tournament, we got to I got to play in a play test with Peter and Luke and um I forget. Oh, um Mike Vanderveen from B- Breaking Games. So it was all official people in me uh, associated with the game. And we tested the the uh, heroes expansion content. And so if you've played dwellings, you know, everybody has kind of the same workers, except a couple have a different powers. This one gives you like a special power that replaces one of your one of your other powers and i had a character that caused people so anytime my wizard went to the underworld everybody else had to discard a magic card and i got to pick one and put it in my hand and just the fun of making that happen like five times during the game was great 
And then um, I had another like one time ability to discard a bunch of magic cards and get new ones. And I'm forgetting what my third one was, but like they were all a little more take that than I would normally do, but it's absolutely how the character's designed. So you'd go in knowing that that's what that is. And just the sheer disappointment that everybody experienced in a fun way every time I made them discard cards. And every time I did it, my selection was twice as good as the time before because it starts with, here's my crappy card I didn't want anyway. And it ends with, that's the one I was saving for the end. And it was just all so satisfying and fun. And I came in dead last, not like a distant last, but I was fourth. And still, it was my best loss of the weekend. Yeah. So I, I was, I was torn. Now, I've played heroes in some of the, uh, the earlier iterations uh, a couple of years ago. I think when it, when it mm -hmm. first kind of bubbled out of Luke's head and it is, yep. it's very clever. It's very clever. It is. And so I, I almost said guild master on this because I, it was a one point loss and I could, I could trace like nine moments where I was like, if I had made one different choice of like any of these, like nine times, I would have pulled it out because I had the tiebreak, but I'm going to go with instead Argent the Consortium. Now, this is a game I don't play it often. I really like it. It is a glorious mess of a game. Like there was four of us and it took up one of those huge round banquet tables. Like just build it. A game plays yes, five, but we, we weren't playing five. Like it, that's not happening. You need another table to do that. And so it's, it's a longer game, though we did use... One of the expansions called Summer Break, which actually speeds the game up significantly and actually helps ease in new players, which I just think is a wonderful expansion. And I always enjoy playing with you because you always say, I like that game. And at the end of the game, you're like, damn it. Just like the the, the grumpy Don comes out in like the, the best way. Not like a, I don't want to be at the table with grumpy, but just the, this has gone horribly I knew this was going to go horribly, and I did it anyway type thing. And, and I wanted to end. Yep, yep. It's kind of where I am by the end, but I still like the game. Yeah, it's 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 amazing how the, that game kind of has that vibe. And, and we were chatting about it, and I think maybe we pinpointed what it is, because you have to spend some actions to look at these hidden cards. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you don't want to do that. I don't like hidden information. Yeah, so I just avoid it. So Don just sticks his head in the sand and somehow yeah. it doesn't work out at, at the somehow. end. But what was fun it. about it to me is Skippy was just, I, I don't know what game he was playing. He was on another planet. But his buddy Eric, three times in this huh. after hours room, he uttered the phrase, I don't know what I'm doing in this game. And three times he won. Now, this one was close. This one, we actually tied. We've tied five to five out of the 12, 12 voting. We both got five. And he took it on the first tiebreaker. And you know what? That, I got no problem losing that game. But, man, that was a great loss, especially because he swears up and down he didn't know what he was doing. Clearly, he did. He's a ringer. I bet he has, like, a painted set of He's a savant. Yeah. So that, <laughs> painted set of Yeah. Like, it's just, I, I just adore that game longer than it needs to be. I think way more information than any game needs to have, but it's just so much fun. I enjoy it every single time. All right. So moving into the best win and I'll go first. Cause I think I only have one. I think I only won one game like the whole time, I think. And that was Stroganoff, which is uh, just over your shoulder. I think, yeah, there it is a little, little bit, a little bit further over your shoulder. Yep. And the game's fine. Like, it's a fine game. I don't know, but like basically what you're doing is you're running around Siberia back in the day and you're killing a lot of animals, which I'm sure you're eating and then you're trading the fur. Like it's not like animal murder, you know, game. But yeah, it it's fine. Like if anybody who wanted to play, I'd be like, okay, but I'm never going to ask to play that game. But it's also the only game I won, I think, the entire time, I think. I'm not counting co-ops. Yeah, not not counting co-ops. That's just gotcha. so. I mean, if 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 you know, I all actually I almost said bullet because mm -hmm. I'm pretty bad at bullet, and the the we did have a glorious victory in, in bullet, but I'm I'm not counting co-ops because it just felt like cheating. 
Because then, the course, because then I got to decide, like, well, which one was better? Was it winning Exo World Survival or was it winning Bullet? Because those are both very satisfying wins. So that that's my that's my best win. What's your best win? I like that you had to go to the game we played the night before we left on the train. Quiet, that counts. <laughs> look, <laughs> look. Don't make me bring up your losing streaks, buddy. <laughs> oh no, please. What did I put for best win? Oh, I played um. With Skippy, and this was on his must play list, was After the Empire. Uh, big honk in production. Um, I forget who this was from, but Gray uh, Fox it's, Games. Uh, Designed Gray by Fox, uh, thank Ev- you. Evan Halbert and his buddy Ryan, something with an M. Sorry, nice. Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, it's a siege survival game. It is competitive. You each have a castle, and there are. Uh, invaders coming in you kind of know what direction some of them are going to come from you don't know what others are you don't know if they're going to have siege engines throwing stuff at your walls or if it's going to be archers or just you know foot soldiers and you have kind of a little village of people that you're managing and you're hiring soldiers, you're hiring mercenaries who are only going to be there for one round. You're building up your walls, but the resources are very tight and you're trying to do as much as you can with very few actions every round. And what you learn pretty quickly with this game is you are going to get sacked at least a couple of times, which is they break down your walls, they kill all your guys and there are bad guys surviving, which means they take your money and, and then they leave. Then you get a couple of consolation prizes and you build up again and a couple rounds later you get sacked again and you're just trying to be the one who gets sacked the least and you know survives with the most money at the end of the game and it was a lot of fun uh we played through the full game just two players it worked really well at two players and i won by one point at the end of the game and that was very satisfying yeah i i played this once i think at four players with one of the designers with like the super mm-hmm. deluxe version, like play mat and everything. But it was like at the end of Gen Con late at night and Evan mm-hmm. just didn't care. He was like, I'm going to smash all y'all drunks and just to just wipe the table with it. And I hadn't gone back to it, but you're right. Skippy really wanted to play. And I was running a game of cosmic frog at the time. And I came back and I was watching. I was like, I was like, wow, this, that really looks fun. And so mm-hmm. And the production's really cool. Even the retail version has these huge honking like plastic walls. So you have this 3D castle that's got wooden walls and you make them stone walls and it just it looks great. And it was it was a really intense game. I was sitting there, I was thinking, I said, man, I wish I was wish I was playing that this time. So, yeah. And I gather so we were this was the deluxe version and it was from the library at the con and it has little like army men like miniatures for the soldiers and the invaders and all that. And I gather the basic version is cubes instead. And there I got I guess there are people who say the cubes are easier to manage, but I don't know. I liked those little army man style figures. Yeah, it's funny they uh, added to the game. Uh, uh, Skippy actually ordered before he left. A, a found found a copy of he he ordered a retail version because like yeah mm-hmm. oh, the cubes are fine and they accidentally sent him a deluxe and oh really yep and he's and, uh, he's like well that's cool I was like well you know you should email them let them know in case they want to send you the other one or at the very <laughs> least like fix their inventory you know yeah and they're like yeah. oh no just keep it don't worry about it our bad no problem hmm. Which is funny because uh, I've actually ordered a game that I haven't gotten to the table or even learned. This game called Barbarian just looks really cool. And I actually ordered the Meeple version and they sent me the one with the minis. I was like, damn it. I want them not to paint these. Oh. And so I, I was I was like, yeah, I was hoping that was like, well, we don't actually have those. And you're like, yeah, just keep it. You're fine. I was like, thanks, but I what are the Meeples. But mm-hmm. so he, he got it. Um, I actually did do have a, a, a copy of it on the way for us to play and talk about at some point. I, I I was told it was coming. I've followed up and they're like, oops, it didn't actually ship. So it, it, it is coming for us. So we'll, we'll be talking about this again at some point down the road. Cool. All right. So coming into the last thing we're going to talk about, and that is well, what, what is your game of the con? And I'll go first because you went because you just talked. And so for me, it was Life of the Amazonia. And some about this game, like there's been a kind of a push of the kind of the cozy game the past couple of years this is the cozy game to end all cozy games 
It's very cozy. Like it just, but it's so satisfying. I think I have never played Cascadia, but my understanding is in Cascadia, you're building patterns and that lets you put animals and waterfalls out. So you're doing that same kind of thing, but this game has the cutest friggin' animal meeples you've ever seen. It has these lovely wooden discs that are all your components in this bag that you're building and you're just basically getting resources and you're turning small resources to bigger resources and you're buying animals but by buying animals it means you're you're providing enough food and water and the right habitat for these animals to live in your personal little chunk of rainforest that you're making and it has this awesome discard pile it's got this ridiculous boat that you throw away your discard pile in and then when your bag's empty it's just set up perfectly. It just dumps right back into your bag. It's a little scoop. It's so satisfying. Yep. And it's, it's a long game. Like it, mm -hmm. like we must've played three hours. Now we probably could have played that in two and a half or maybe two fifteen, but we were babbling a lot and then yeah. ordering food in the middle and all that. But I just had a blast playing that game. So that that's my game of the con. How about you? I got to go with dwellings. If I play it at a con, it's usually going to be my game at a con. But it, it was just so much fun playing with the heroes and seeing that little new angle. And, you know, I have told Peter, like, this game doesn't need expansion content. And that's correct. And still, the expansion content is awesome. So I had a lot of fun playing with the heroes. I would do it again. I'm looking forward to the time when one can buy that expansion content. It's a lot yep. of fun. Some, some time between now and the heat death of the sun. Be and it's been a long time since I played that game with Luke himself and Peter. And so that, that was just, well, I played with Peter a lot since, but it's been a while since I played it with Luke. And that was a lot of fun too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't played, uh, actually, I haven't played Dwellings with Luke since, gosh, I don't know, like probably three, four or five years. Yeah. yeah. Been, been, a, been a long time. All right. But so that that's going to wrap up our, our con recap. It's for everybody listening, watching. At some point soon, we're going to get back into kind of the regular not con recap podcast, but we are just in con season. So probably the next one of these will be me talking about Gen Con with whoever I can con into coming on. Uh -huh. See what I did there? Yeah. Um, but uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, maybe become a channel member. Make sure you go buy your copy of Backyard Chickens. Because Don's got a shirt that's got that on it right now. I Look do. at that. See? That could be you chewing on a copy of Backyard Chickens, everybody. Make sure you get your own copy of that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. I'll be my usual sparkling self. I'm just feeling weary. Sparkle. <laughs>